Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. We've already had a word from the Lord, I believe, what's been said. So take note. And I think one of the things that comes to me is trust. What Ron said, it's well, all comes down to a matter of trust. And I hope and trust, and I trust the Lord will speak to you from the few words that I have to say. Uh, turn with me to Genesis and uh, chapter 18, and just a few verses from there, reading from verse uh, verse 16, thank you. Abraham pleaded for Sodom, that's the title of this. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abram walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abram what I am about to do? Abram will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he promised. Then the Lord said, uh, Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous <clears throat> that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abram remained standing before the Lord. Then Abram approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people there in the city? Will you, sweep, will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from 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 you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike, far be it from you. And this is the text that I wrote, is, Will not the judge of all the earth do right? Will not the judge of all the earth do right? Just turning to a few verses from Matthew's Gospel, and chapter 7, there's a few verses there, reading from verse 1. Do not judge, or you will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to remove the, remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you in pieces. Let's pray, shall we? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, our hearts, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our, my rock, our rock, my rock, and my redeemer. Lord, you know our hearts, and we pray that you'll meet with us now. As you already have done, Lord, you've spoken to us already, and we just thank you for that, and we pray that you'll continue to speak to us now. You know our hearts, and you're just what we need, and we pray that you'll be that to us. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. Amen. I've got a subject here that I didn't want to take. I did not want to take this subject at all. And the Lord kept putting it on my mind, take it. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, no, I don't want to, but I've taken it. I'm going to give it to you. 
and you'll do what the Lord does and speaks to you as he will. As I was preparing this, there was a strike of, well, a number of strikes actually, but a strike of the barristers. The barristers of all people were standing there on television striking and they got a great big placard, well, a number of placards, but one of them said, Justice for Justice. I thought, Justice for Justice, oh, that's an interesting one. And so it got me thinking about justice. And the text is, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Judgments. You know, we're told in the Bible on some days not to judge, and yet every day we're making judgments, every one of us, all the time. Our minds are judging and thinking about, well, what about that? What about this? We're making judgments. And the judgment that is meted out by God to the sinner. Sin is a dreadful thing. God was looking down on this earth and he saw the sin that was in Sodom and Gomorrah and he said, it's very grievous to me. It's very grave. In one translation, I think, although I can't remember which one it was, he said it was putrid. It was that bad. And God had in mind to destroy this city because of their sin. We read, uh, uh, Val's already said it to, read it to us, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why does sin produce death? Why does it produce death at the end of the day? And I've tried to think this through, and it's not an easy one to think through, but it, it, it comes to, in the end, that it destroys. Sin destroys. It, uh, we read, of course, in Romans, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death, but the gift. Wages. You earn it. The, the sin earns wages. In James, we said, James 1, 16, it says, when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Death. What a subject. What a, what a prospect. And yet, we have a God that wants to rid us of sin and give us eternal life. A gift. You know, looking at the television, and I'm sure you think the same, you've seen there's a public demand for justice. I mean, it's that little girl of nine yeah. has been killed and shot. I mean, she was doing nothing. She'd... How on earth it happened? And yet, it did. And that girl's lost her life. That family is devastated by this thing. And she's not the only, that's not the only one. There's been others as well. And we, we, seem, we seem as if we sinking lower and lower in, in, in our um, morals and, and way of life. And we're almost going back to the Middle Ages, I think, when the, the, the things so dreadful happened then. But God has a plan. God has planned for this world. He, uh, I think um, Val brought this out, he has a plan. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You may have heard that it is said, Judge not that ye be not judged. But this is often taken out of context. Because as we read, you've got to remove, it, me, it goes on in that, in that section to say, you've got to remove the plank from your own eye before you can judge others or before you can speak to others about things like that. In Kings 3.9 we read, it reads, Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. 
For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? The first thing that I want to bring to you, or the second thing actually that I want to bring to you is God's plan of judgment. God had a plan. He has a plan now for this world. And you are part of it. If you have given your life to Jesus, you're part of that plan. And without you, it won't be the same. God has a plan for you in that, in his overall world judgment. Should not the judge of all the earth do right? In this chapter in Genesis, Abraham pleads with God. As you, as you know, he pleads with God. He says, is there 50? Will you destroy this city, these cities if there's 50 righteous? And God says, no. I won't do it if there's 50. <clears throat> and then he drops to 45. If there's 45, will you do it? And Abraham goes, keeps going down. He pleads with God. If there's 45, will you destroy their city, these cities? God says, no. I will spare the whole place for their sake. And Abraham was getting very frustrated. I say frustrated, that's probably not the right word. He was talking to God, God the, who made the world. He was speaking to God. and He must have been quivering in his boots, if he had boots on, of course. And um, he um, said, well, if there's 40. No, God says, I won't do it for 40. And of course he goes to 30, if there's 30 people. And now he's really getting, you know, uptight. God, will God listen to me there? He said, well, if there's 30, no, I won't. And everyone comes again and says, 20. No, God says, no, I won't destroy it if there's 20 righteous. I'm surely in two cities, Gomorrah and Rome, there must be 20. Abram's mind must have been going over and over. And he says, Lord, just one last time. Will you destroy it for 10? There must be 10 good people, righteous people in that, those cities, surely. God well, says, I won't destroy it for 10. In the next chapter we read that he sent his angels to destroy it. And it goes on, <clears throat> I won't go into that, but he goes on to um, some terrible things that were going on in that city. And God, with his angels, rescued Lot, his wife and two daughters. But he destroyed the city. Why? 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 Lord, why? Surely there were ten good people. Ten righteous. No. Can't have been. And he took out Lot and, and his wife and two daughters. And that seemed to be all. He even warned the fiancés of the daughters. Look, God's going to, Lot did, God's going to destroy this city. And they just laughed and said, it's a joke. A joke. God destroyed those cities for the reason being that it's the sin. And if you think about it, in the end of the day, those cities would have destroyed themselves. Murder would have become so bad. Thieving. All the things that go on. It would have become such a mess as we feel about the world today even that they had no time for God and God knew that God's judgment shall not the judge of all the earth do right we can't question God on what he did with Sodom and Gomorrah he judged them he destroyed them it would have destroyed itself eventually and secondly or should I say thirdly God's planned judgment given to man did you know, Ron's talked about trust, Val's talked about trust, I think Jenny's talked about trust. Did you know that you can trust God for what he is going to do? 
You can trust him for everything. You can trust him for wisdom in your situation. How often have I made a a decision without trusting and asking God? You can trust him for that. And we, we read of an account of Solomon. Um, we read in, also in Psalm 106 verse 3, Blessed are they who maintain justice. Who maintain justice. In 1 Kings 3 and verses 16 to 18, which I'm not going to read to you but now because of time, but we find the account of King Solomon here in the case of two prostitutes who lived in the same house. And they both had babies, baby sons. And uh, they, one at night, one of the women lay on her baby and killed it. It died. And the, both of them came to King Solomon and said, look, oh, she's jumping in jumping before the story she, in the night the woman who lost her son switched the baby her dead baby for the other woman's live baby what a carry on but that's what they did and they the one that was uh, uh, wanted justice well they both wanted justice really but the one that, that lost the baby to to the other mother took the matter to the king and she told him that the dead baby was not not hers and she had the other one the, the live one was hers what would you do if two women came to you look that's my baby no it isn't it's mine you could imagine the argument you could imagine them getting right head up and Solomon said I'll tell you what we'll do he sent out a shocking demand bring me a sword and cut the living baby in two and give the half to one and half to the other what what a thing to tell anybody what a command and um, the woman that her son was was hers said no don't do that don't do that give it to the other one I'd rather see him kept alive and given to the other woman giving to her than be cut in half but the other woman said no 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 carry out justice cut him in half I'll have half and she can have half. And so Solomon made that judgment, giving the living to the first woman because she said, he he judged that she was the mother, the one that wanted it to live. Should not the judge of all the earth do right? Solomon prayed and asked God for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. We read in 1 Kings 3.28 they were in awe of the king. They saw the wisdom given by God to administer justice. God is able to give wisdom and in judgments. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the earth, world, earth, earth, shall not the God of all the earth do right? They prayed, Solomon prayed for wisdom and God gave it to him. Have you a, a matter that needs wisdom? It seems to crop up, doesn't it? That we need wisdom. We need wisdom for what we're doing and everyday living sometimes. And Lastly, God's plan for judgment for this world. Shall not the judge of all the earth, uh, of all the world, all the earth do right? 
God's judgment of sin. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him shall not have not perish but have eternal life. God's, God's plan for the world is that man should have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. He wants to save the world. But man becomes so proud of himself. Val was saying, she doesn't know why she's standing here. Well, I know why she's standing here because she's one of God's people. And she has a message. God wants you in his world plan. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's only begotten Son. There's such an unbelief in the world. The often told story of judgment was this, and you've heard it probably many times before, where the two lads grew up together and as they got older their ways parted one went into the justice system and became a judge and the other a full-time thief and robber and uh, they went their separate ways but later in the as the story goes the judge the one that went into a judge as a judge and and into the law, found himself facing his best friend at school to judge him. What on earth is he going to do? And he faces his best friend, and it's told what he's done. He's, he's robbed somebody, or done some terrible thing. And the judge thought, well, here, what do I do with my best friend? Do I let him off? Do I do, 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 do it a bit lighter for him? He's my best friend, or was. But no, the judge gave him the full penalty, which was a large amount, say a thousand pound or so. And he um, pronounces the judgment on his best friend. He's got to pay it. When he had taken off his robes and in the public, after, afterwards in public, he went down to see this best friend. And he got out his checkbook and wrote a, a check for the, the amount that he just judged him for. That's God's way. God so loved that he gave. God has a plan to get rid of sin. The question is, are you part of his world plan? Do you need to accept the gift to join in? Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's nobody, none of us can stand up and say, I'm right, Lord. We've all short, fallen short of it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 2, 1, therefore you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on, on another, you condemn yourself, because you judge, you judge, but the practice, you practice the very same things. How that comes back onto us. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Do not judge by appearances, That's in, in, uh, in the Old Testament. In John, do not judge by appearances. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, we, whether good or evil. Romans 5, 3. But God shows his love 
true for us in that while we were yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus knew what we were like. God knew what we were like. Yet he planned the, the death of his own son for us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? I started off with a word of trust that came to me when others were speaking. Trust. Have you put your trust in Jesus as Saviour? You know, there was a, a little girl that <coughs> with her best friend went to a, a, a gift shop, shop. I don't know how old she was. But her best friend was walking around this gift shop and the best friend put her hand into some expensive items, picked them out in her hand and put them in the pocket of, his, of this little girl. She went home with his, what the best friend had put in her pocket. Guilt overcame her. She was, felt guilty. What had her best friend done? They hadn't paid for it. They'd walked out to the shop. And, and this little girl was so ridden with guilt. She went to her mother. Mother, what should I do? She poured out in tears. I've taken this, this, these expensive items from the shop because my friend put them in my pocket. And her mother said, confess it to the Lord. Ask him to forgiveness and go back to the shop and return the goods. She did that and she felt that her guilt had gone. She felt so relieved. The story is a true story, apparently. I've not probably told it that well, but it's a true story. The shop owner said, don't come back again. That was the difference in this story to God. God forgives us, whatever we've taken. Whatever we've done, God will forgive us, but he doesn't say, don't come back again. But God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? It's coming up to a time of very diff difficulty with that's already been mentioned. In our lives, there's going to be so much problems for, for people in paying the bills. Paying for electricity, paying for gas. And the world seems in a mess with their economics and their, in every way. But have hope. If you need wisdom, ask of the Lord. And we have a hope that Jesus is coming again. The time is drawing nearer with a world like this in such a mess. Have you put your trust in the one that judges the whole earth? I trust that you have. May God help you to live in these coming days with trust. How it comes back to us, doesn't it? The test. In Philippians we read, Do not be anxious about anything, but with all prayer and supplement, make your requests known unto God with thanksgiving. Thank the Lord for what you have, but make your request known and trust him to carry it out. What he, what he feels, what he is right to carry out. For his name's sake. Amen.